Hello and welcome to this week's Faith and Friends. We're bringing October to a close. We're getting ready to move into November. <laughs> I'm not ready to move into November, but that's beside the point. Let's stop it all then. Let's just <laughs> extend October. The groundhog saw a shadow, right, Zach? <laughs> I've that's not paid attention February. to the groundhog. All right, November is coming, whether I am excited or not. <laughs> it's not that November I don't like, it's just November temperatures and the potential for wind and cold and ice and, you know. You should really things. be protesting against March and February because that's more cold. November's not as cold. You need to alter your brain. <laughs> Christmas things are already in the stores. Thanksgiving's coming, though. You have your you have your meal all set. I'm sure you guys who are culinary experts have already got it all planned out. Your meal plan is all done. You get your turkey in the freezer, right? No. You can get turkey this Silence. time of year. Silence. You can get turkey 365 days a year. I thought it was just on sale in November. Zach. I've had well, a turkey sale sandwich in November. You can get it anytime on you a want. few occasions. <laughs> so clearly, you can get turkey deli turkey. Oh, the deli. That's yeah. not the real stuff. <laughs> That's. I don't know. That seems like real turkey. To we me. need that. We need to ask Dr. Trudy Peeper about that. I think. Okay, all of you at home, <laughs> write in and explain to these boys that you know what, turkey is available any time of the year. I've eaten it, so I know it is. I'm still doubtful. Well, let's move on. Let's move on to something that we all can be sure of, and that's what's going on in this week's show. What, are we ever really sure of that? Maybe We're going to start today's <laughs> show with Operation Christmas Child Shoe Boxes and a special mm -hmm. woman who's very thankful for this ministry. That's right. We're also going to find out about the herb of the year. Do you have it in your regular diet? You can find out soon. And we also have another book giveaway. But Andy, we're going to read some scripture first. We are. I missed that herb of the year announcement. Was that on? Did we well, have a live here? It wasn't Press one conference? that I grew because oh. I didn't get the award. So I, Sorry, Zach. Next yeah, year. There's always next year. Matthew. Well, it's the herb of the year, not the grower of the herb. Oh, of the year. well, that's it. I probably did grow the herb of the year, and I just didn't get awarded. You, you forgot to name it. Matthew yeah. 25, 37 <laughs> through 40 is where we're going to name our verse of the day. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? The king will reply, truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. Jesus, of course, called us to, to heal the sick and to, mm -hmm. to help those that are hungry. And so what a, what a wonderful time of year to do just that, whether it's leading up to Thanksgiving, whether it's the Christmas season, so many people in need and so many ways we can give. That's true. And it, and it shows, I think, a, an element of the character of Christ that he was concerned with the least that... And sometimes I think it's easy to be caught up in, in other things and to ignore maybe some of those maybe not as glamorous people or hmm. glamorous things that need done and need help, but it, it's the least of those that he's concerned about. No question. Well, you've been hearing us talk about Operation Christmas Child, the annual na nationwide collection program. It's easy to take part in. Simply fill a shoebox with toys, school supplies, toiletry items, and more, and deliver it to a collection location like right here, the TV 44 during the annual collection week. That's right. And do you ever wonder what happens to those shoe boxes? And do they really have an impact? Well, Jackie Stewart was once a young girl in an orphanage in Guatemala, and she was given a shoe box. Listen to what she has to say. So my story starts in Guatemala. I was born to a young mother who could not take care of me. So as an infant, she placed me into an orphanage. And I lived there for six years with 70 to 80 other kids. And, you know, as an orphan, nothing is ever yours. From the clothes I'd be wearing today, my friend could be wearing them tomorrow, the very few toys that we did have, to the basic necessity of a toothbrush. So at night, you know, the girls would line up and we'd just pass the toothbrush, one girl to the other, to the other. And that was just my orphan life. Everything was shared. Time Operation Christmas Child came to the home and all the kids are called into this room and I'm thinking, oh no, what happened? And you know, then the boxes start being passed out. Every kid having a box. And I'm thinking, can I keep it? Is it mine? Are the boys going to steal my toys? And then seeing that every kid had a box and knowing that it's mine. I don't have to worry about it. And it was so exciting when we could open up all the boxes and I love the coloring books and crayons and stuffed animals, but my wow gift in that box was having my own toothbrush. 
and they didn't tell us we weren't supposed to eat the toothpaste, so I thought that tasted really good. But that planted the seed of hope in my life in knowing that there was more than just the orphan life. There was, there was hope out there. And when I was six, my adoption completed, and God blessed me with an incredible Christian family. Our church packed these boxes, and you know, year after year, I'd be so excited to pack these boxes, and our school was involved, and I was like, yes, I get to pack these boxes and help orphans like me. And it was about 10 years later that the light bulb kind of went off. And I was like, Mom, these boxes that we've been packing, this is what made the difference. This is what made me realize that there was more than just an orphan life. Hmm. Wow, what a story there. More from Jackie in the coming weeks. This year's shoebox drop-off dates are Monday, November 16th through November the 20th, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Thursday hours stay open until 7, and Saturday, November 21st, 10 to 1, Sunday, November 22nd, 1 to 5. Mark? This week, the church world remembers Martin Luther, who on October 31st, 1517, nailed 95 theses on the door of the Wittenberg Castle Church in Germany. This day is known as Reformation Day. Now, what was on these 95 theses? Well, writings by Luther attacking the Catholic Church's practice of selling indulgences to absolve sin. He focused his writings on two central beliefs, that the Bible is the central religious authority, and that humans may reach salvation only by their faith and not by their deeds. Luther's act is seen today as a start to the Protestant Reformation. Luther's writings sparked a debate which continued for the next four years, and at times, Luther was in fear for his life. But today, there are many church denominations that look back to October 31st, 1517, as a very significant day in church history. Well, the recent women's conference in Salina is likely still claiming major significance to many area women. Author and speaker Robin Dykstra used her personal stories of her life to encourage and uplift others. She's the author of a brand new book, And the Widow Wore Pink. Jennifer has more in today's OIO in the Community. I could not imagine what I was going to find coming to the Mount Tabor Church of God Get Real Women's Conference. I knew Robin Dykstra was the keynote speaker, but I had no idea what I was in for in hearing her incredible story. She is the author of The Widow Wore Pink, A True Story of Life After Loss and the Transforming Power of a Loving God. Robin, first of all, thank you for coming to our part of Ohio, and thank you for being transparent with your story. My pleasure. I enjoy speaking to women, and it's just a delight to be here. Thank you, Jennifer. Now, to put your story in a nutshell, it's so hard to wrap it into a couple minutes. You've been married four times. The average person might go, what? whoa. <laughs> You've been a Playboy bunny. Another, whoa. whoa. But the story is wrapped in the love of Jesus Christ. The message of forgiveness is just incredible. What led you to the point where you knew God needed to use your story to reach women? You know, I just couldn't believe that he would let me go through as much as I had and then just let me sit on it. So I had started teaching Bible studies and leading little mops groups, groups for moms. And when I would share part of my story, the transformation in women, the freedom that they experienced to share their own stories and be transparent and let Jesus affect them. It was so powerful. I thought, oh boy, if I could get a chance to do this in more often and in front of more people, that would be fantastic. Well, you have been speaking for several years. She travels all across the country, but the book just came out in September. So it's very recent, very new. Why the book now? Why at this point? Well, it was really important for me to tell the truth. It was important for me to honor the dead. And it was important for me not to horrify my children. So I waited until I felt like I could write that story authentically and not hedge anything. The temptation would be to hide some of the less flattering parts of my life, but then you leave out um, important pieces that other people can relate to that women really need to hear to know that if God could save me or give me freedom or redeem me, that he could redeem them regardless of what their circumstances were. Transparency is definitely something that resonates with people as we have all, not any one of us can say that our life has been perfect or without difficulty or without regret in some way. As you are being transparent, 
how are you seeing women's lives being changed? Oh my goodness, Jesus is moving in ways that I couldn't even imagine, just setting them free from addictions and infidelities and even lies that we have gotten in our head that we just feel like we need to live with, that we just, we're so far in we can't get out, or or habits that we just have decided to live with, or even... Um, pain and suffering that we just think, oh, that's just part of my life. That's just who I'm supposed to be. And it's just such a lie. If you could speak briefly to the women at home who are watching right now, who are saying, you know, that's great for you, Robin. It worked for you. Mm -hmm. I'm so glad. But for me, my life's this whole. This is where I am. What can you tell them? Yeah, it's never too late. That's, that's what I want women to know, that it's never too late, and Jesus is enough. And if you just give him a chance, he would do for you what he would do for me. Well, the book, again, is called The Widow Wore Pink, A True Story of Life After Loss and the Transforming Power of a Loving God. I've only had it in my hands for about a couple hours. I've already started reading it. The stories are gra- will grip you, grab you in, and you will want to read more. I encourage you to get your own copy. Go to her website, which you see right here on the screen, on the screen. And check out Robin Dykstra if she's going to be in your area. Definitely, definitely worth going to one of her events. Herbal remedies, certainly popular around the Bowers household, as well as <laughs> my household as well, with the essential oils, and it's becoming quite popular. That's right. Well, herbal remedies have grown in popularity as traditional and natural medicine has also gained interest nationwide. But how often are you using the herb of the year? Ooh, the big announcement. Do you even know what it is? No. In today's Lost Creek Care Center health segment, Mark is with Dr. Trudy Pieper, who will tell you why you want this herb as a part of your diet. Well, it's perhaps not as well known as the Emmys or the Dove Awards, but recently the International Herb Association announced savory as the 2015 Herb of the Year. We're joined now by Dr. Trudy Pieper from Phoenix Wellness Center in Johnstown, Ohio. And Dr. Trudy, herbs are one of those things where I, I think most folks, they think of herbs, they think, well, that they'll give us some seasoning, but herbs, particularly savory, have got some really good health properties as well. They do. Um, it's been around for 2,000 years, savory. Most people are not aware of it. It's, it's almost always known as the bean herb. If you're cooking beans, you put, should put savory in with it because it helps stop the gas. So that's one of the medicinal uh, side effects of the, the herb. It has, um, there are two types of savory. One's a shrub that's called winter savory, and then there's a, a perennial that is summer. And both of them have great uh, qualities. It's from the mint family. And you can use them, uh, grind it up, and then put them in rubs. They're great for uh, stews and any kind of cooking that you're doing. I think that's one of the great things about herbs is that, like you said, you can just throw them into like a stew or a soup, use it as a rub. It's a way to get some important nutrients into the body without necessarily realizing it. And it's been, uh, for 2,000 years, people have used it. Started with the Greeks to the Romans. Romans brought it to England. England, the American colonists brought it over with them when they came, and it's interesting, they use it to plant around beehives because they think that it makes the honey better. And then commercially, uh, if you like the taste of uh, salami, you're tasting savory because they commercially use it in salami making. What are some other herbs that have got benefits other than just adding taste? Well, it, 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 it Typically, all herbs have medicinal qualities, and I think that as a doctor of naturopathic medicine, for me, I'm, I'm an herbologist at heart. I love my herbs, and to cook with them is fine, but I think it's more important what we can use them for to heal our bodies. And obviously, we've already talked about it helps with gas. It also is good for digestion upsets. If you have a little um, nervous stomach or your stomach's just feeling a little bloated, that's a good time for savory. Uh, colic with children, diarrhea and indigestion. It uh, has astringent properties, makes a great gargle. So if you take a little astringent, a little uh, savory in some hot water and gargle that for your sore throat. And then it's also used in toothpaste, toothpaste and soaps. Wow. Previous herb of the years are, are Timesia and elderberry. Yes. Can we discuss a little bit about what those properties? Yeah, last year, and one of my favorites is Artesmia, which um, is, contains a lot of different herbs that are used for parasite control. Mm -hmm. And so that's wormwood and mugwort, or all or a couple of those. And then the, the year before that was elderberry. And elderberry uh, is one of my go-to for children for sickness and illness. And so it, it builds the immune system gently. And you can, it's got a berry flavor to it, so kids like to take it. 
So elderberry is more than just poisonous wine from our stuck in old days. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, a lot more information available on your website. Yes, it is. And my website is www.phoenixwellnessforyou.com. That's Phoenix Wellness, the number four, the letter U.com. All right. Thank you very much, Dr. Trudy Pieper from Phoenix Wellness in Johnstown, Ohio. Savory. It was savory. savory. It was savory. How often are you eating savory? I'd never heard of savory until about an hour ago. Well, everything is going to change in the Lynch household from now on. It'll all be savory. Savory. Well, this past summer we gave away Dr. Trudy's book, which wasn't about savory. It was about preventing cancer. Now we have a new book giveaway, this book. It's called Questions Jesus Asks, Where Divinity Meets Humanity. It's written by Israel Wayne, a national, a national Christian speaker who is passionate about biblical worldview and God's design for the family. Families in America are under attack, teenage rebellion, divorce, juvenile delinquency, emotional disorders, and relational dysfunction are way too common, even among churchgoers. Studies show that the majority of Christian youth abandon the Christian faith sometime after high school graduation. How can you have a godly family in the midst of such a worldly culture? These are quotes from Israel Wayne, who's coming to this area on November the 9th. He will be speaking on the topic, Revival in the Home. The event is taking place at First Baptist Church on Jennings Road in Van Wert, and the public is invited to attend. Meanwhile, now is the time for you to win a copy of your own book, Questions Jesus Asks, where divinity meets humanity. Entering is simple. Just email us at faithandfriends at WTLW.com. Give us your name, email address, mailing address, phone number, and answer this question. What one issue do you see taking place in your region? What are things that need to be fixed? I will we'll draw from all the entries on November 4th. Another man who's passionate about godly revival, Bill Harris. Zach talks with Bill about his current teachings this month on his, up, his show, Update. Well, thank you, Andy. Bill has two words for you to ponder today, condemnation and conviction. One pushes a person down and the other lifts up. In today's society, how should a Christian respond? Well, Bill, a powerful message that you bring to update with Bill Harris this week, and we're talking about condemnation and the conversion that we go through when yeah. Jesus offers that. And so um, for any Christians out there, or maybe non-Christians that are curious of what the Christianity is all about and what they've heard, um, this is a great message for them to tune into. I certainly hope so because the world tends to shy away and even shun Christianity mm -hmm. altogether because they say we condemn them. And I want to make a distinction between condemning and conviction. Yeah. As a minister of the gospel, I have to preach the truth and that means I have to preach against sin. And that doesn't set well with some people <laughs> who want their sins. But I don't do it to condemn the world because we must understand this world is already condemned. When you turn on the news and see the terrible things that are happening, yeah. it's because this world is already condemned. God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world. So we must preach a message of salvation. But in the process, we got to point out those sins. And, and then that condemnation that the world is talking about, it, it's really not condemnation. It's conviction. The condemnation is to push people down. That's sure. not where we are. The conviction is to bring people up yeah. in Christ. So how do we do that when we're living in a society where it seems if you speak even an ounce mm -hmm. of, of conviction, then mm -hmm. you are condemning or, or maybe people just see Christianity as, as a bunch of people that are just trying to condemn them. How do we tote that line without saying, yeah. you know, um, without stepping away from what we know are the truths of Christianity. And, and that, that latter part, I think, is what's happening in some areas. In, in some cases, Christians feel so intimidated yeah. that they, don't, they won't take an offering in church or they won't do this or they won't do that to satisfy the world. But well, let me say this to encourage you. The world doesn't care about what you want to take away and sacrifice so that they'll be attracted because their hearts are not there for that. Mm. It takes conviction. Yeah. And to conviction, to convict them rather, you must tell the truth. So when you ask, what do you do to make sure you're on that line and not going one way or the other? You have to tell the truth in love. Hmm. That's exactly the way you have to do it. You do, it's like you do with your own children, you know? Mm -hmm. You have to tell your children the truth. My, my daughter came downstairs one day this years ago when she was a teenager, and she had a dress on that was too high. I said, you, you can't wear that <laughs> to the party tonight. You know? and, uh -huh. and I knew I was risking my relationship sure. with my own daughter. But then if I let her go out there and something happens, then I'd be forever uh, regretful yeah. of not having told her the truth. Sure. And so let's dive further into what it means um, when you say that conviction is bringing up, that Jesus, because of what he's done and what God's done, has offered us um, that conversion away from the condemnation, 
but once that we accept Jesus into our lives, then, yes. then we are free from all of that. That's what, and and that's, that's where the conversion comes in. Yeah. If, if the conviction, if we preach it in love, tell the truth in love, and it convicts people <clears throat> and they realize, I'm going to admit that I am a sinner, that I need Christ. That's where the conviction comes in. Now the conversion comes in because they're reaching out to Jesus Christ and saying, Lord, please save me from mm -hmm. my, uh, my uh, condemnation and my sin. Save me from myself. And yeah. then they become converted Christians. And when we talk about that the world is already condemned, we're talking about the fact that there is a, th that we are born into a sinful world and that yes. it, we're dead already. And yeah. you talk about the effects of how death separates us on multiple levels, whether it's physical, spiritual, yeah. or emotional. But until we accept Christ, how are we? Uh, how do we understand that we are separated or that we are, are truly dead spiritually? We are, and, and I think many in the world don't realize this because the Bible talks about how that Satan has a blinding effect mm -hmm. on people of the world. So the preaching of the gospel to convict mankind of sin is to take the blinders off so they'll see themselves uh, really needing God and then reach out to embrace his son, Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And if that doesn't happen, then the consequences, the consequences can yeah. And the world doesn't want to deal with consequences unless there's somebody, a voice of morality that's speaking out about those consequences. <laughs> they're wallowing in the consequences, but still denying it. The yeah. Bible says they would deny it, yeah. but you got to convict them with the, with the gospel. The gospel is the tool that yeah. God has given us to use. And so in our last moments here, maybe there's a listener or a viewer watching that wants to know exactly how to go from condemnation through conviction, conversion yeah. to a life of, of Christianity. If they can feel that the Lord is tugging and pulling at their heart and saying, you know, you're a sinner, you need to make it right with God, then you accept Jesus Christ by admitting that I am a sinner mm -hmm. and asking him to come into my life and change my life and wash my sins away. And now I've got a new life and I'm going to get in a good Bible believing church. So now I can learn how to change my lifestyle to live for him. That's the conversion process. And it goes from condemnation through conversion to conviction, <laughs> through conviction to conversion. <laughs> Always such solid information. Thankful for Bill Harris. Mm -hmm. Thankful for Zach too, of course. I'm sure you are. <laughs> well, I hear more from Bill Harris every week on his show, which airs on TV 44 Thursdays at 9 a.m. and Sundays at 1.30. A reminder again this week of some of our new shows that you're not going to want to miss, including the National Bible Bee Game Show, which airs Friday nights. Participants in this show started in the summer with a Bible Bee, and these are the top scores from the competition, so you can play along with a Bible Bee Friday nights at 9.30. Lots of fun there. More programming news as well with Andy Griffith is back. We're pleased to report that we were able to negotiate a new contract deal, allowing us to get one of your favorite shows. We hear from you. We know it's one of your favorites. So Andy's back as well in his well-loved slot here on TV 44 Monday through Fridays at 8 p.m. in a special extra episode, Doubleheader Thursdays at 8.30 as well. And I've been hearing rumblings from programming department. There might be some additional Andy airings coming up on the weekend. Christmas with Andy Griffith? Life is all good as long as Andy Griffith is around. Mm -hmm. On well, Fridays at 9 p.m., you can travel the country with the Green family during Chasing American Legends. Each episode is a fun journey through America's most amazing moments, redefining the history genre of reality television. How do you like our new shows? We invite you to give us feedback. Just give us a call or email us at faithandfriends at WTLW.com. And before we go today, we have something we'd like you to add to your prayer lists. If you have a church prayer list, a small group, Please add this as well. Our fall fundraising campaign is underway. It's called Carrying Christ's Mission. We're desiring to partner with you as we together carry Christ's mission into the region in 2016. In the coming weeks, you'll hear more from us on how together we are reaching the region for Christ. You're certainly included in that together because everyone who partners with us is part of that mission. Now, there are several ways you can partner with TV44. You can be praying for us as Jennifer just requested. You can also donate financially, volunteer at the station. But as a viewer-supported TV station, God uses your financial donations to keep our ministry going. So as you prepare your hearts and minds for these coming weeks, we again ask you to keep our fall campaign in your prayers. And if God is calling you to partner with us financially, we say thank you in advance. What an awesome privilege it is to be able to share the love of Jesus through the television airwaves. And on that note, we'll take one final look at our scripture for the day. Jennifer. Looking at Matthew 25, 37 through 40. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in or needing clothes and clothe you? 
When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? The king will reply, truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. What can you do for God today? What can you do for humanity that in reality you are doing for God? Well, for all of us here at TV44, thanks for joining us this week on Faith and Friends, and we'll see you again next week.